think the assignment was for you to go ahead and work however many of these repeats you needed to reach your underarm. I needed four repeats for my underarm. And uh, when I, uh, and then I wanted to get to row nine of what, however many number repeats, then I wanted to get to or stop, have you stop at row number nine. Now it could have been any row. I, row number nine just happened to, I just thought it was kind of in the middle of 16 rows and I could add my sleeve. So that's where I am and hopefully you have gotten uh, some work done and that you can follow me along now. Alright, now we're getting ready to separate. This is, like I said, this pat, uh, this sweater is a little different than the other sweaters. The other sweaters we separated by binding off. Well, we're not going to bind off on this one. We're going to pick up, we're going to add stitches for the sleeve. And uh, because the bind off, you know, we have the big large, like I said, that big large hole, that space. And sometimes I just get tired of dealing with that space. So let me show you this. So here we go. This is, as you can see, everything is on my needle. I'm up to where I need to be. My yarn, my stitches look great. And I'm ready to work row nine. Now, before I can work row nine, we're going to slide the work. I am right-handed, so I'm working from right to left. So I'm going to slide my work over to my left side. Let's just see now. If this is on camera, I can't really. Yep, yeah, okay. I backed out a little bit. All right, so here I am on the left front of this sweater. Now, what I want you to do is to take one of the straight needles that you, you need. Remember I said you needed some straight needles in the same size. Because we've got to clear all these stitches off and get these all these sections free of each other. And you will have to maybe have extra balls of yarn. So I'm simply going to take this straight needle. Now I'm on the left side, so I'm not working row nine right now. I'm just going to transfer just like this. Transfer all the stitches. And the markers. Be sure to get your markers in place. Make sure that you transfer any yarn overs also. Let's see how quick I can do this. Since we had to separate the tape and make a part two, I don't feel like, oh, I have to just um, rush right through these steps. Now, you know, um, we've, everyone, we started at step one, which is our ribbing or the bottom of the sweater. Step two was the body, which we just finished, or we're getting ready to go into step three, which, of course, is where I add sleeves, or and we work on up towards the shoulders. I'm try, trying to keep to those four steps to keep myself <laughs> from uh, going off the deep end. So I'm coming up. To where I want to split the front from the back is this arm space. I had two little green markers here just to help me to remember. And I'm just transferring all the stitches onto my... Now I'm using these shorter bamboos, which is... I think I can get them all on here. The long ones just they're just too long and here we go. Now watch. I'm coming up. I'm transferring. I can just drop this marker. And, yeah, I can just drop that marker. And I'm gonna take half the stitches. There are four stitches. Everyone should have had four. I'm gonna take four to put on this front where I will add more stitches to make a sleeve. But for right now, I don't have any yarn over here, so I need to cap that, just like that. Put a cap. Okay, and then you can cap this side until we get ready to work it. Now, when I turn it back to the right side, and 
and I forgot to bring my masking tape over, but I think I can do it on this little piece. If you in doubt where you are, sometimes I'll take some of the, some pretty masking tape. You know what? Some of this masking tape on the wrong side, and you might want to do this before you put it on the sweater. But masking tape and put row number, whatever row, just to remind yourself where you are. So there's my row number nine in case you know I lose my marker on my paper or whatever anyway so I know I'm supposed to be starting row number nine when I come back and of course here is now I have my back I have the left front on a needle now the next thing I look at I have this large section for the back but I can't get to it because my needle starts over here on the front on the right front does that make sense so now we're gonna start working row 9 I will work row 9 I'm not gonna repeat the pattern for you because you already it's already been on the screen and everything I'm gonna work over I'm gonna work row 9 over to these marks and then I'll show you how we'll start the sleeve so transfer your other stitches make sure you have needles because I will be knitting from this uh, circular needle onto a regular single a regular straight needle so have that and you will need some caps back in just a minute okay so I've worked row 9 and I put as you can see I did go ahead and get a longer uh, straight needle just so that I can spread out the stitches and you can see what I'm doing alright so I'm working across so that I can get this side separated from the back because we're, we're still connected to my uh, circular needle so I see my green markers which represents my underarm space where I want to add a sleeve and I come up to the green marker or whatever mark you have and I can take it off and I think I said on the other side transfer but you know use four know what you want to do is split that's what I meant you'll leave two on for the back side and I'll just split I'll take two stitches and knit just like I was doing knit those two now I can have my circular needles free just like I have the left side free and I can just back I can remove this cap and then I find something that I can, uh, well, I lost my little cap. Oh, here it is. I use those little grips. I cut those little pencil grips in half. You know, the kids use them, get them at the Dollar Tree. Or if any other kind of way you can cap your circular needles. You can use a rubber band. But go ahead and put your ends together to keep them from flopping around. So now that's over to the side. And now I have... Free. and of course since the yarn is on this side then it makes sense to go ahead now and start working back but first I'm going to show you how to add our sleeves we're going to add sleeves right now but before we do that let me show you this this is a long project I know that and you may have other projects you're working on or things you need to finish or other little idea you know little gifts come up this is the kind of thing you leave on or that you put in a special bag or your special place and you can work on it like I say it's on the the tutorials on the YouTube there's no you don't have to remember where your pattern or what book it came out of it's right here hey look I'm right here you can come and visit me anytime <laughs> but this is sometimes what I do because like I said I have a lot of different sweaters on needles and I get all I take a piece of masking tape as you can see I just take and I take my like a sharpie pen and you wouldn't want to do this New Year's good sweater and by accidentally drop it or something but so while it's still on the tape I mark down maybe what row or anything that might help me to remember where I am even though you have your little paper copy or you have some hand notes but sometimes you're like oh I lost my little marker or how many how many stitches for the sleeve so I'm gonna use four stitches for my sleeve I'm gonna add four and then we're gonna go ahead and add three more stitches to make a garter ridge along the edge so that I don't have to pick up stitches it will end the sleeve alright so I go ahead I put that on here oops 
I tear it off, just paper light tape, and just stick it somewhere, just like I did the other, but just so that you have a place to always remember. I just like to do this. And make sure you put it on the back. Now, I can put this up and I always know kind of where I am. All right, so now, let's get back to this, this part. So I'm up here, and I'm getting ready to... I, so I need to add my sleeve. And I'm going to add four stitches. I'm going to simply come right here and go ahead and add four stitches. And the way I'm going to do it on this edge, on the opposite edge, we normally just knit them on. Well, I'm going to knit it on, but I'm going to do it like this. I put my needle in, and I'm going to knit, and then go into the back and knit the stitch. Knit into the front and into the back. That's one stitch I've added. Can you see that? Hope it's on camera. Okay. I need to add four. That's one. Go into the back of the stitch. That means I've knit two stitches on. I need four. Go knit it on, go into the back. That's three, so you can count them. Okay, I need four for the sleeve. I don't know why I'm struggling with that long knit. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing, Jay? Sometimes I'll use just a little uh, double pointed needle to do this. Okay, so go into the front and go into the back of the of the stitch. So all together I'm doing seven. So make sure. Let me put, pull it back. I've done one, two, three, four. All right, and you can see where now. I need to do three more to make a garter edge. That's four. Knit into the front. Knit into the back. It's a little awkward working. So that's one. Here's another one. Knit into the front. Knit into the back. It's two. And we'll count, make sure. Okay, so let's see if I have seven extra stitches on here. They may not be pretty, but that's okay. They'll work. All right, there's where I started. So there is one, two, three, four, five. No, that belongs to the that belongs over here. You can see what belongs. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now. We will start working this side. I will simply turn the work. Yes, you do have to turn. <laughs> and I will start working this side. And of course, the first three stitches we just said, they're going to be garter stitches. So I'll knit those three. One, two, three. Okay. And you can put a marker, maybe a little yellow marker or something different than what your other colors, other color was. All right, then yarn in front. Now we get back into pattern. You go right back into whatever pattern, and this would be row 10. It's a purl row. So row 10, I'd start purling back across the whole body of this front. It's kind of awkward trying to do it in, on this camera and get it. You know, than if I was just sitting over there on my couch. So, this is where we are. Let me go back to the front so you can see it. As I said before, you have to finish the repeat you're on. However many repeats it took to get to your arm space. We were on row 9, and we will purl back on row 10. You have to continue to row 16. Then you go back to row 1 again. Because we need to make another repeat in order to get ready to bind off for our neck. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, get a little tea. I'm going to get me a little water. 
we're doing great. And faster knitters, you know, you've got, once you get the concept, you, you have no problem. Then you know that we will simply go right to the back. I, I just keep it in, I just keep it in, in, the, in line. I'd go to the back, and you got to add the same amount of stitches, four, and then the extra three on this side of the, with the needle. You'll have to have an attach a, a new skein of yarn. And then also on the other side of the back. Now you're getting it. Now you see. <sighs> All right. See you back. I'll get a little more work done. And then I'll see you back shortly. Okay. Well, first of all, welcome back. And happy Eclipse Day. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm probably the only person in the whole world forgot it was the Eclipse Day. <laughs> so I was sitting here getting ready to uh, work on the tutorial, try to finish it up. You know, because I'm running a little behind. And I kept looking outside thinking, oh my God, it is just so cloudy. Is it been getting ready to storm? It just kept getting darker. <laughs> it kept getting darker and darker. I have my television on, but I have it on mute. No sound, you know, because I'm over here, at the, you know, making the video. I'm telling you, so I thought, oh my gosh, I went, to, I, I went outside on my deck. Look, still clueless. <laughs> Jay, where? And I saw my husband, my deck is high so I can look down at my neighbor's back patio and my husband and all, and the neighbors, they're all out there looking up with their glasses on. And then I remembered it was a solar eclipse day. Oh, and I, you know, almost instantly wanted to turn around and look, but just the peripheral, just in my peripheral vision, peripheral vision, whatever that is, <laughs> from the side, <laughs> peripheral, peripheral vision, okay, uh, I could see how shiny it was. And oh my gosh, I ran back inside. <laughs> because I got enough problems with my eyes already. So, all right, so that's my eclipse story. I don't know how I forgot the eclipse. I've just been busy, you know, I've just been doing stuff. I, you know, I, I don't know. But anyway, I thought, why is it getting dark? <laughs> how old is too old? When you can't remember the solar eclipse day. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, now it's passed. And uh, as you see, I did run in. You see, I had conscience of mind to run in and grab my camera. But I just taped it. You know, I just made the thing off the television. I just turned up the television and uh, took a few shots off our local news. So at least I'll have it on my, you know. In my, I'll put it away in my computer. I'll, I'll put it in a special file. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, I've been working, trying to get done, building up to the solar day that I would forget. <laughs> Isn't nature beautiful? Hence, Jay's Knit, Nate, the beauty of nature and lace. And nothing could have been more spectacular and beautiful than that beautiful solar eclipse. I'm telling you, for all those who just can't believe there's something higher, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where, what, look, I don't know what's going to happen to y'all. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful. So, now, I'm back over here trying to get this sweater done because uh, the first video is all the steps. This is how we're going to put it together. And the first thing I want you to notice, I'm going to kind of move this up. Let's see if I'm on camera. Okay, I've done all the pieces on this one. The original one I did in three pieces. But I thought people would just like, oh, Jay, the, you know, the new people, I thought it would turn it off. So I went back to putting everything on a circular needle. And so we have a right front, a left front, the back, everything. Now, I have worked. Check my camera one more time. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I have worked for me one, two, three, four, and it was about four repeats plus nine up to the ninth row to start my underarm and as you can see here is my underarm right there there is a sleeve where I've added those stitches we did that on the first tape okay on both sides so they're both on the same row so they they match they should match just fine all right let me pull it down a little bit now I need to stop this front edge you see the front edge I went ahead and have I have my back can you see my back the total repeats I have straight up the back, I had to do six repeats. So now I've got to bring the front up 
to six repeats but before that I need to stop my front this little lace on the front and I'm gonna stop it at the fifth repeat so this is what I want you to do this will help you and it's just a good little thing you can kind of remember so uh, you won't make a lot of mistakes and have to keep pulling back all right this is let me make sure now okay which side am I on? okay because I got it just turned reverse here's my right front because we're looking at it down but if I had turned you know if it was on where it should be this will be this is the right front all right on my right front this is what I do to help me and it'll be on the screen or if it's not on the screen you'll still have it I take my trusty masking tape remember the masking tape idea you just you, if you start doing this idea you're gonna save a lot of time now don't do it over your sweater like I'm doing because you don't want to drop the pin and, and put blue on your sweater but I'm going to put on this masking tape right front, FR right front, just so I'll know. And I'm going to put BO bind off. And this is where I'm going to bind off at on row number one. That's for me to remember so that on when I'm getting ready now to work these bind offs. So on my right front, which is this one, I would take this masking tape, and I already have a piece, but I, you know, I'd pull it off. Well, I got to get it here. Okay. See, I just pull it off, and you can just tear it. It doesn't have that much sticky. And you stick it, make sure you're sticking it on the wrong side of the fabric, you know, like that. Now, on the left side, so I'm going to put left front, left front, slash bind off. You can put bind off neck so you know what you're talking about if you want to. And we're going to have to do it on, on the pearl row, row 16. So I am at, let me just go ahead and put that down before I forget. You're going to bind off row number 16 for the neck. So I take my trusty my piece of tape with that so now I'm not gonna be confused because sometimes it is you get confused all this flipping back and forth so here's my left front I know that I'm gonna bind off on row 16 my right front I can wait till I start row five row one of the uh, fifth repeat you see one two three four uh, of the sixth repeat I'm sorry one two three four five I've done five all right, um, let me get back to, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. All right, here we go. This is what we're going to do. Something else I was going to tell you too, and that escaped my mind. Oh, uh, if you're having problems with all this fabric, remember on my other sweater, I, I show you how if you would just go get some large pins. I have a large collection of old baby pins. Well, not they're not old, but I pick them up whenever I see them somewhere the Walmart or baby store but if you could just pin everything just like if you were sewing there's no difference than if you were sewing this garment and you had to pin everything together so that you could sew it so I have large pins you can see them right there you can see them and I pin everything in place I pin the front to the back here it is down here see the pins I don't know if they're showing up because they're white I pin them pin the bottoms edges line it up I move the sweater down like this I pin the two sleeves or where the sleeves will be see there I pin that it's just and then I can pin this front edge a little bit I pin the sleeves over here does that make sense and then the fabric doesn't become so cumbersome that you like oh man I don't know if I'll ever do this again now you're working in a piece that's at least it's pinned together all right so I'm going to start on let me see where my yarns attach okay my yarns attached to uh, see if you forget my left front so that's where I'm gonna start and my left front I need to bind off on row 16 so I'm on row 16 so now I can turn and I'll reset my camera. So let me get a turn, reset the camera, and we'll start the bind off for the net.
I wanted to do a little recap to make sure that we're on the same page. Sometimes, you know, when you're doing this in segments, sometimes you, you know, you kind of jump over information or whatever. So just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. I've, I've laying my sweater out long ways instead of front on top of the back so that we can see every section. This is the right side, right front. This is the right front of my sweater. And on the right front, I have worked up to one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I started at the six. I needed six repeats. Now, the first row, row number one, as I start the six repeat, I can go ahead and bind off. Because on the right side, you can bind off on row one. When we get to the left side, I will we'll go over that. But I bound off the first eight stitches. As I get ready to work row one of my last repeat. Okay. Then I went ahead and on the right front, we need to make three decreases at the neck. Just like on my arm space, I use it. Use it. Three decreases. Well, I do three decreases here. And since it is the right front, I will use the slip slip knit in order for it to lean in the direction to the left. Does that make sense? So I bind off eight stitches. All right. And then from that point, I slip slip knit the next two stitches. Then I knit across, uh, over to the pattern. I work row one of the pattern work on a cross and do my little garter stitches at the you know my little three garter ridge stitches I purl back okay <clears throat> so that will be row two the next right side row I'd slip slip knit again <coughs> oh excuse me I got strangled <laughs> so the next two stitches I'd slip slip knit and then continue uh, that will be on row three. I'll continue across the pattern and purl back. And then one more decrease, which will have to be on row four because you only decrease, your, uh, I only decrease on the right sides. So on row four, I would slip slip knit again and go across. Now I will continue to work, finish till I get to row 16. Just finish the pattern, working back and forth as you normally would until you get and uh, row 16 of course is the last purl row now when you get to row 16 the last purl row of the pattern and you turn your work we're going to add five more rows in order to get all the way up to our shoulders everyone will add at least five more rows if you are taller and once we get to our five rows and you say, well, I think I need a little more. Then you add in increments of two. So instead of five, you may need seven more rows to get up to your to the top of your shoulders. Because we are going to be measuring. Everything is going to be measured now by how many inches you have in your sleeve to make your sleeve opening. Here's the sleeve opening here. I need nine inches at least. Because I've kind of pinned it in place and stuck my arm in. Now, if you're real large up here in this part of your arm, like I say, you may have to go up two more. Just go in increments of two. If five is you don't think is enough, then go up two more because you're going up to seven. But remember, this is just the front half of the sleeve. You will also have two more rows when we get to the back of the sweater. So you don't need to jump up a whole lot just in increments of two rows but I have my rows <clears throat> so now going back now so like I said row 16 is purl so when I turn on the right side of the fabric I finished all this up I got my neck I finished the last uh, I finished the last uh, repeat of the pattern and then I'm gonna knit one row it's gonna be in stocking it so you knit a row then purl then knit then purl then the last row we will knit, but I need you to stop before you do the last row. Just kind of stop for a minute and uh, 
we're going to count how many stitches you have on your front needle here on the this right front and of course we'll do the same when we get to the left I'm just going to go ahead and get it out here on the right since we're on this side so I will count my stitches <coughs> I had 48 stitches 48 all right then I went over on my left side and I looked and I had 48 on that side well then I counted all my back stitches and by the time I took 48 from the back and then 48 again there were not enough stitches left to do a neck I don't think I had maybe about 15 that's not quite enough 14 or 15 it wasn't enough and it won't be enough for you either so this is what I have to do on the last knit row the last row I, I, I'm adding five rows or you may have to add seven if you're tall remember but on the last row that I'm going to knit I'm going to decrease this front, these front stitches by four. And you just eyeball it. We don't have to count or do anything special. All you do as you work across the last knit row, you do a few stitches, knit two together. Do a few more, knit two together. A few more, knit two together. And just as long as you don't go right to the very end, a few more knit two together you have decreased I've decreased my front down from 48 to 42 stitches now that's gonna help me because I have to do it on the left side and that will give me more than enough stitches for a neck and then of course I'll show you that once we lay it all out but I wanted to get that in while I'm here so that we're all on the same page I made sure that I have enough room in my sleeve. See how many inches you're going to need. This is only the front of the sleeve. The back of the sleeve is on the back part of the sweater. So that can kind of tell you, you know, how, about how much you will need. This sweater, you know, kind of comes down a little bit. But some people are much larger in this part of their arm. We have bound off the neck edge. You can see that. But we didn't have enough room to take out enough stitches because of this pattern. So, like I just showed you, we'll take out four extra stitches. Everyone will take out, just keep, let everybody stay the same. Extra, extra large, all of them, four extra stitches. Okay? Now, let's move on. <coughs> While I have the camera set. Now, I'm on the back. Let's move to the back real quick. All right, I've done the same thing on the back. Now I've got this on a circular needle, so it's a little messy here. I probably have problems trying to show it to you, but let's see, can I do it? So I can get this up. I'm running out of time here. <laughs> okay. Once I've reduced left and right front down four stitches, now I can count starting on the edge. I always start from the edge count in so if I had 42 and I've checked both sides then I'm gonna go two four six and I'm gonna count all the way to 42 and put a mark put put a little mark that I can come back to I had one but I've already started binding out okay so I'd put a mark and then I'd go to this edge of my back and I'd count in the same number two four six and it has to be 42 main thing of the sweater remember or, or top the way I work it your fronts are the they're the most important we want them equal and pretty you know symmetrical as much as possible we don't want one hanging to off <laughs> so I put another mark you see my mark still there so as I just like the fronts I added five more rows to this back. Once I finish row 16 of this pattern, this the lace pattern, then I knit a row, purl, knit, purl. Now I'm up to my last knit row and I've already knit across and I had a mark. So on this side of the mark, oh and of course I've already you know counted those. So now I'm just binding off these stitches now that I have decreased four stitches on each side 
So I just come here. Now I'm binding off. Let me see if I can get this bound off. Then we can open our needle up. All right, so here we go. I'm just binding off the stitches that I have left for a neck. And you do not need a ton of stitches for a neck. Sometimes you leave too many. So I can see my mark there. Can you see it? Okay, so I bind off. And I have one stitch left, so you know I have to remove the marker. There it is right there. I count it in from the edge, so I know I have the right number of stitches. But I still have to go over here and use that stitch to bind off the last stitch in the neck. Now there's the last stitch in the neck, and there's my little back neckline. That is enough, because we're going to have a nice opening in the front. Now, I will just continue across. I will knit across the stitches on. This is the left side now. And I want to show you. Just go over. Make sure we're in the same place. I'm telling you. Um, this is why, I, like I said, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> so, I just rather... So I'm just knitting across this shoulder here in the back. Because we need this shoulder in the back and the right front, the shoulders in the front to match up. Because since I always do three needle bind off for my shoulder seams, and as you've seen before, they're very nice and I just think it's a just a nice neat seam and so now I'm just coming up I just think I want to just go ahead and finish this then I can open it up and show you so now I know that I have the same amount of stitches in the back shoulder and the front and plus I have enough stitches to represent my neck so that we can pick up our collar. So there I there it goes. Alright, now watch. So now I can open out my needle. And here we go. Let me lay this out now. Alright, let's see what we have on camera. Hope I don't hit the camera, but let's see what I have. Okay, now. Whew. Alright. So now I have a shoulder on this side I have a nice neck that's bound off with just a few enough stitches because I uh, and then this shoulder now this is what's so good and if we continue to new knit if I bought you know as I've been on YouTube and as I'm I'm learning right along with you you know I see mistakes I made looking back at other things and go okay you know if I change that or if I do this a little different so from now on as we get ready to knit sweaters whether we're knitting them in the um, in one long piece, one large piece, or if we're going to do them in three pieces. Maybe the next one I'll do in three pieces and show you how I do it. Let's all, all, let's let everyone, just to give you time, whatever brand of needles you want, let's go with circular needles. Circular for the back, two smaller circulars for the front instead of the straight. I had a, uh, I had a number nine and I think it was a 29 inch or 20 I think there's a 24 inch too you know just a small a smaller circular needle for because I'm gonna show you it just makes so much more sense because you have a point on each end I don't have to worry about am I in the right direction I don't have to worry about well are my stitches lined up in the right direction because when I got to the left side of course I had to transfer all the stitches because these straight needles only point in one direction so, so that's a good little thing to just kind of put on the back burner, put in the back of your mind when you have a coupon. And if you know you're going to make more sweaters, okay, my number nine circular, 36 or 48. Also, you would need at least two more number nine circulars, 24 or 29 for each front. Now, now we, we'll be able to really move a lot faster. So, like I said, I'm learning as I go and what's, what, you know, things that will make thing, make it easier. All right, so now you see what I have. I have that. Now I move over to my left side. 
to my left front. Let's go with it. Make sure and see if I had this one. I did the same thing. I have this is our left front, and we bound off our neck. But we, I have you have to bind off your neck on the pearl side, row 16. We bound off the left front. We had to do it on row 16. because that's just the nature of the knit of how you know how you have to bind off all right but then on this side I also did remember my little tape I wrote down knit two together so that the decrease stitches will lean to the right so knit two together and I did it three times every right side row I came to I did knit two together worked it back continue to work the pattern all the way up to the 16 rows at row 16 up here way up here at the end of the pattern I needed to add five more rows so I added 16 as a pearl so I did a knit the next row was a knit pearl knit pearl and before I uh, when I got to the last knit row I had to take out four more stitches remember this side had to match so I just knit knit two together knit a few more stitches knit two together kind of spread it out knit knit a few more knit two together and then do one last one so now all my stitches are matching my two right fronts and now my shoulder okay so I said all that to get to this now but in order to do a three needle bind off the first thing you have to do is turn your work just like if you were going to sew a seam you turn it so the right sides are facing this is why it's important to have the needle and if you want to say if this needle it was on pointing the wrong direction all I did was I t took a straight needle and I just transferred not worked I just slipped the stitches from this needle to another needle to get it pointed in the right direction but like I say you know I'm learning you know what's a lot easier and a lot quicker if all this was on double pointed needle uh, you know small cable needles circular needles that's what I'm sorry sorry <laughs> on like a number 9 29 or 24 circular needle then I wouldn't have to worry so much about it because there's two point there's two needles on each side one on each side all right but now I will get ready and I will reset the camera now we have the needles pointing in the right direction I've bound off my uh, neckline I've counted and recounted so that this the same number of stitches on the front are on the back now and now we can do a three needle bind off Whew. and I have a nice opening for my sleeve all right, let me reset set the camera and let's see what we can do. Getting ready for our three needle bind off. So now I've done a lot of work off camera and I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate on this sweater also the three needle bind off. To me it's just real pretty and it's easy to learn and remember what you're doing first of all the right sides need to be facing each other so this is the wrong side I like to start on my sleeve edge so that if there's any bad problem it will wind up at the neck edge because I'm gonna it can be covered up under a collar or picked up stitches or whatever so I'm gonna start on this side I also use, instead of having to negotiate with a, a longer needle, I just use one of these simple short little uh, double pointed bamboos or whatever you have. Alright, so it's just like you were binding off, uh, but we're just using, we'll have uh, two needles as we work. First thing we want to do, and I... Alright, so I'm going to take this little short needle and go under the first loop on the first needle and look go right up under the second needle the loop and just like I if you were working in a normal way you would bring the stitch you knit the stitch 
I have one stitch on my little needle. Now I need two to start the bind off process though. So this one's kind of even. Seems like I got some split yarn. There we go. Okay, we've already counted several times. You need the same number of stitches on both uh, front and back uh, needle. All right, so now I go into the next stitch, like as is to knit. Go into the second stitch on the second needle, knit the stitch, bring it under and through both. Pull it off slowly, take your time. Now just take one of the needles and reach back. Just reach back and pull that stitch over. See, it's just like now. And eventually, once you get used to it, you'll have a, you'll be able to get a rhythm. Pull through both, pull that stitch off. We have to help it with your fingernail there. Just pull it off. Just don't let any others get off. <laughs> Look, don't let any others escape. Okay, and reach back and bind off. Drop it. And let's see, it's kind of hard to get a rhythm because I'm knitting awkward trying to be on camera. Bring it through. Now slide that one off. Once you knit it, knit the stitches, slide it off. Now reach back. Pull it over. And that stitch is bound off. Alright, here we go again. I go through one. As to knit, go through the second one. Knit the stitch. Bring it through. Bring that stitch off both needles. Now reach back and bind off. Plump two. Bring it through. Now reach back and bind that stitch off. Just like that. Okay. I'll do a few more and then we'll stop and talk. I want to do the sleeve real quick. And then we will have, all right, and reach back before you forget it and bind off. All right, one more. Under as to knit, like to knit, knit the two stitches, pull them both off the needle, reach back, grab that stitch and pull it over and bind off. I'm just going to pull this up. Rhythm will come with more practice. Now that's just the beginning. Make sure you don't lose any stitches. And when I flip it over you have a nice seam. Let me show you the other one that I have that I've already finished. Now I'm going to cap my stitches because I don't want to have to lose them. Oh, I've made it this far people. We'll be back to the side in just a minute. Okay, I want to show you this on, see if I'm on camera. Here's the side that I went ahead and finished. I'm learning to try to save time. And look at this nice seam. Here's a nice seam. Here's a nice edge where they meet. Then you go over to the neck. And once you have a shoulder seam, guess what? You almost have a sweater. We just have to. I want to show you the, the how I finished up the little sleeve. Okay, so this sleeve doesn't have the big hole that we're going to have to pick up stitches, nor will we have to do a side seam because I did this little, just a little decorative garter ridge row up the where the uh, sleeve, where the underarm. Of course, we can put a decorative stitch here. We could have we could have gone with some ribbing or you don't have to have anything at all. In fact, when we, if we had done this sweater in three pieces, you everything, all the math, all the uh, formulas, everything would be the same except this. You will simply not do a garter ridge. You would just knit to the end of the row, end of the back row, the four stitches just like you normally do. And then you would have to sew up a seam the front and the back then you sew up a seam just like we normally do this was just a little alternative and a way to help people maybe to get a nice little sleeve without a lot of work now watch I'll show it when we get to the other side but once you have since we added some stitches so now the sleeve 
is out like this. And all I have to do and all you have to do is make that one little short seam about three inches. See that little seam right there? It's right up under the arm, right at the bottom of the sleeve, and voila. Now if we hadn't put the it had not put this little garter ridge on the edge, you could still pick up, take you would still have a circle, you'd have to sew it up, and you could pick up stitches and continue to with the sleeve if you wanted a longer sleeve. You see that? Or, you know, it's just a nice way to kind of not have to deal with sewing up a side and trying to match them up. You have a nice sleeve and a short seam. Alright, so now I'm going to go over here to this side and I'm going to flip the work just to show you how just so that we can get to the end of this and I can get some pictures made and hopefully get these videos up okay I've missed my deadline twice but hey knit happens <laughs> oh, okay so here we go now you know when we're sewing, in fact, maybe I should turn it. I'm going to turn it. I just got to make sure I'm on camera. All right, let me get my... I think that's it. Okay, good. Right here. Okay, so here's a sleeve. And you see how it has just a little small where we stopped the sleeve, where um, we added the sleeves on each side. Now when I get ready to sew this, I'm simply going to match up on the right side. And just like if you were doing a regular seam, you want to come up on the very edge, leave a tail. You want to match these two edges up. Let me get my tail. Then I'm going to come up one more time to pull that together. I want to make sure I pull it together really nice and tight so they're nice and even. See, now that's as much seam as you have to sew up right there. So now once I pull it together, then you know in knitting we just pick up a few stitches on one side of the, the edge. Then I cross over and I pick up a few stitches, just a little stitch over here. Then I cross back over, pick up just a, just a small seam there, and it pulls it together. Come on this side, pull up, and you work it back and forth, just like this. So they're really kind of going flat to each other, and you work it, so it's not like a whip seam. A whip stitch and just a little bit stay close to the edge as possible like right on this side here and see I didn't have I don't have to go down the whole side of the sweater I just have this small little opening and it and it, and it uh, sews up really nice and pretty I'm pulling like small little stitches are better and then when you get to where it's closed completely see now it's closed but I'm just gonna of course make a couple of just like you do in sewing you might want to take a couple of little tack stitches like just make sure a couple of stitches and then take you take your yarn and your needle to the wrong side in here and then of course you're going to weave it in, weave it in well because we don't want anything and sometimes I like to go, I'll go up and then sometimes I'll come back down just to make sure it's in there and then you can whack it off alright this is the where I started so I'll weave this in but I won't take time to do that now so now you get an idea, of course I, I still have to finish the top of this one. Now you have an idea of a nice 
little sleeve that's already that already has a nice garter stitch border because I didn't really feel like picking up uh, stitches on the original sweater I went to a US number 8 and you will use a US number 8 to pick up stitches for your collar so let's go up to the top to the collar Ooh, I don't have my I tell you what let me reset my camera because I don't have this side done I'll be right back now here is an overview of all the work we've done on this one in real time there's my back neck that was bound off here are my two fronts with my decorative border here is the pattern I've repeated one two three four five six six times on each side here is the simple sleeves with just a short uh, seam here's my uh, uh, shoulder three needle bind off so the only thing left to do on this one is to pick up stitches for a neck collar and of course I'm not going to take you through all of it but I am going to show you a few things about picking up this collar all right, so I have to turn. I've got to get the yarn, and I'm going to pull in a little bit so that you can see it. Let me see where I am. All right, excuse the sunlight. I see a little sunlight shining through. Let's see if I got it. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Okay, let's see. Now I've dropped my needles. Oh, J, 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 J. I tell you, I've, oh, I've worked hard for this one, <laughs> but it is a pretty sweater, and I, I ran and did a little steaming on this one just so it would kind of lay flat so I can start picking up this collar, and of course I went ahead and tried it on, because you know when you're working on it, it looks, it's all bunched up, and you think, man, I don't know if it's going to fit, I don't know how it's going to look, on. oh, it's just real pretty. <laughs> oh, I don't have a problem, you know. Because I understand how knit is, and like I say, since I'm not a profession or anything, I just try to like whatever it is that that I like and that I was able to finish, so it doesn't bother me. You know, in my circle, look, where I wear my knit things in my circle, I'm telling you, I don't have people don't run up to me and go, "Ooh, did you?" Oh no, they'd be like, "Oh, that's so cute. Did you? Where'd you buy that? Where'd you get that? Oh, what pattern is that?" So, you know. Depends on your circle. Now, if you've got a high-end circle, then I guess you've got to have high-end stuff. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to pick up a collar on this edge. And I want to show you this to kind of get you started. We are going to continue this nine-stitch border. We're going to do the first nine stitches we pick up. We're going to pick up and... Um, well, first of all, we're going to pick up stitches all along, and I'm going to show you how I do that, but I want to show you this. Usually right here, and I hope the sun, I'm trying to get out of the sun. The sun is coming through my window just a little bit. Yesterday, I had the eclipse. Today, I have the sun. <laughs> get it together, Jay. All right. So, usually right here on the end, you try to pick up this stitch on the end, and then we're going to pick up stitches all along. Well, sometimes... For some reason, it, they just never line up. So this is what I do, if I can, depending on the edge I'm putting on. I go, here's the stitch right on the, on the very edge. All right, I go down one stitch, go up under two strands, but I go down one stitch, the stitch right below it. And then I put my, let me just get my yarn here. I put my needle in there and I pull it through. Then I go to that top stitch right on the edge. See that? So I automatically have two stitches now. And then I'm going to put the working yarn in the tail and go through there. Ooh, I got kind of a mess. There we go. So now I start. I can drop my working, uh, the tail, and just grab my working yarn. Now I can continue to pick up stitches along this this top edge and you try to go up under two strands and let me just share with you this that I found from this point to your 
This is every time I do a, a, a collar. From this point to the shoulder seam, I try to add as many stitches as I can. This will make this will make your collar front heavy, and the collar will pull down in front and lay much nicer than it just being hanging over here on the side. So this is what I do. So let me just grab my yarn here. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Wait a minute. I'm tangled up here. Okay. So I start to go up under two strands and I'm not in a hurry or trying to make big big spaces. I'm trying to stuff as many in there as close together as possible. And I just start knitting them on. Just close just as put them close together. And if it comes to a maybe a spot where there seems to be a space, put two in there. Put two stitches in there if you have to. So now I'm going to do this. I'm just picking up my stitches. And like I said, I'm trying to force as many in this front area before I get to my shoulder seam I'm gonna put it now see like right here there's kind of like a space or something you know it's kind of loose well I'm gonna put two in there <laughs> just put two in there if it'll go if you can get two in there I think I can get two in there no they may cross over well I'm gonna have to pull that one together that's gonna cross over all right so then I try to put one real close just now, see, just jam it in there. All right, let's see, can I squeeze one here? Then squeeze another one real close. I'm not trying to space them out like you normally would space or do three and skip one. I want them jammed in there because it will force my collar to lay like it should, lay forward in the front of the sweater and not have a tendency to kind of go backwards. So they're here, right here, and I hope I'm on camera. And I just keep jamming them in as close as I can. You will have plenty of room to see it's so jammed in. Look, they're nice and tight. I keep jamming them in. I look for another place real close, not skipping anything. Put, them, put a stitch anywhere you can get it. And that will make this collar really top or edge heavy or front heavy. I'm loading up the front of the collar. And it will have a tendency to hang in front and look really nice. Okay, I'm going along. I'm almost to the... I'm almost to that seam. Oops, I dropped something. I got to pick that back up. Okay, let me jam a few more in there before I get there. Okay, jam, get a little more yarn. See, they're so tight in there, you can hardly even move, I can hardly move them on the needle. That's what you want. You don't want loose. Now, I hope, let me just kind of see, have I been on camera all the time? Yeah, I think so. Okay. You don't want loose if it's all loose and that collar's not going to lay as nice in the front. Okay, I'm jamming up. That's the needle, I think. Yeah, that's, that's the other needle. Let me put it. I'll just stick it down my blouse. <laughs> okay. All right. Touching the camera. Now I'm up to the shoulder and I can see a big gap here. So I'm going to have to go up under another strand trying to pull this big gap together. I want to jam. I want to make sure I don't have a big gap. There's... So I got to kind of manipulate and find a way some stitches or some strands to close up this gap. Oop, that ain't going to work there. And this is just by trial and error because everybody's going to be different. So let me see, can I find something? Let's see, can you, even if you have to turn it a little bit and get some stitches. Okay, I was able to find a stitch there. Ooh, that's tight. Okay, so now... You know, you always have that little 
area between the seam and the back where it wants to be loose so you want to make sure you start trying to jam in some stitches there that's the turn of the collar that's a fold over of the collar so you try to find a place until we get to the actual bind off stitches then you can relax because each one of those stitches you just go up under two strands and pick up but before that we need to make sure like right here I see there's a hole here sometimes I may have to just fix that with yarn needle and yarn if I've jammed as much if I've done let's see I'm gonna pull back and see if there's any way if there's a hole if I've created a hole to see if I can not have that hole well I went under two I think and then I and I skipped over here so if I can't oh I oh I I kind of picked up some strands on top and I was able to close up that hole see that's just by chance okay now let's see can I jam in a few more here I haven't got to the bind off stitches once you get there then you then you have uh, stitches that you have to use okay now I'm gonna go up under this strand and see if I can see so you just try to figure out a way oops I hope I didn't get off camera too bad okay let's see can I get this now I'm having a hard time trying to close this one up okay I got one okay almost up I think I can jam one more in here before I go to the back let's see can I jam well here we go all right push it in wiggle it a little bit all right now I'm up to the actual back where then now you can relax your hands and arms and your wrists oh now I can just go right up under the two strands you know there's two across the top where you bound off the stitches but look how tight and if I do have a hole that I see that just couldn't be picked up or filled in then I will have to do that with yarn needle and yarn but look at how many now you can I can count and see how many I have so when I get to the other side I can at least try to match now you know that we're gonna do one by one ribbon we're gonna do the pattern the little uh, uh, yarn over pattern for the first nine stitches and then we're gonna start in one by one ribbing so to make the whole thing work we need at by the time I get around and I'm gonna knit some off off camera by the time I get around we need to have at least an odd number so uh, you may have to pick up an extra or, or get rid of one or whatever but once you take your count then you want an odd number I'm gonna work some off camera so you can see and then I'll be back I've made it around and I've really pushed a lot of, as jammed in as many stitches as I could and I'm up to about 85 see normally you probably if you didn't if I didn't tell you this you'd probably wind up with maybe 50 57 maybe 60 you know but see I was able to get 85 because I want a lot of stitches in my collar so that my collar will roll and, and fall so now I'm up to I just want to show you this so as I come to this the other opposite end so there's 85 so I'm still jam I'm still putting them um, I wanted to remind you to go down. Oops, where's my... Oh, Jay. <laughs> okay, listen. Okay, so I'm up to the few last... I think it's, this is about 85. Oh. I come in always at the end. You can... You always have problems at the end. <laughs> okay. I think that's 85. 86 well you know we need an odd number 86 is right on the right at the very last stitch I can get right here 86 but remember I started by going down one to the one stitch below so if I have 86 so I'm gonna drop down of course I don't know how many you have and I may need to recount but I'm just saying that you'll go to that last stitch on the edge but don't leave it there do like we started drop down one row and pick do that la that stitch there I'm just going one stitch below the edge and pull a stitch up there now I'm ready to go into pattern 
that was row that was a pickup row now I can turn the work and see where am I where's my needle here's my needle all right let's see can I get back on camera so that you can kind of see what I have and it's not such a jumble up mess this part is hard okay I think that's good all right I'm going for it people I'm going for it <laughs> all right so now I go the first nine stitches on this end and the opposite end we go back into pattern I knit we'll see that I have so many jam they're gonna be tight at first that's all right oh the only thing I, I didn't uh, emphasize and that I should have and I really kind of forgot but it, I can't go back now you're supposed to go down to a US number eight like you'll need a long US number eight it just makes the collar. I mean, you can. I'm do. I've got a nine, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. But I meant to go down to an eight on my on my green one. I did go down to an eight, and I normally do. I didn't even think about that. I just never thought of it. <laughs> so if you made the mistake and you got all of your stitches on nine, hey, go for it. It's not gonna hurt anything. But normally I would go down to an eight because I'd be doing uh, the one by one ribbing on the sleeve. So see, I would have my eight out, and I didn't have it. All right. So anyway, now we're going into pattern. Look. Jay just wants to look I'm fessing up <laughs> I told you I wasn't a professional <laughs> look I didn't got punchy now <laughs> okay knit one knit two and knit three okay then the pattern was you remember the front edge pattern yarn over oops knit two together they just makes the stitches a little smaller and they just look a little you know but this nine is gonna have to work yarn over knit two more for me and some the larger size you may have three man see I got them on here good and tight <laughs> that's because I jammed a lot on here this first row will be hard but that's all right so I've knit three yarn over knit two together yarn over knit two together right here now knit the last two one two now I have two four six eight and one makes nine you know we have nine so here we can just put a red one so we'll know that's where it now I go into my ribbing and you can tell this is the wrong side so what do how do we start on the wrong side I'd bring my yarn in front and I'd start with a pearl one okay pearl one it's hard to get these off right now now knit one Oh man. Woo! Now if you have metal needles, you won't have this. It's human and my stitches are not signed because I have a lot on here. Okay. Knit uh, excuse me. Pearl one, knit one. Now pearl one. Knit. Push as you can. Then back in front, pearl. Okay. Now you got to work all the way around to the last nine stitches and you'll put those nine stitches in the pattern. Knit three, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, knit the last two. And turn and now you're just working back and forth, round and round and round. And, and when I get around here, I could switch to my number eight if I felt like, oh, I wish I could have made it a little, not so, uh, you know, I could go down to a number eight go all the way around go all the way around and you can just switch nobody will know the difference so let me get around I'll do a few rows so that you can see give my hands a break but before that as I get ready to go here and do something I want to show you these little buttons I had in my button stash now you have to find little small buttons because you know you don't want to stretch your lace all out and after all this work and you're going to need uh, four, maybe five. So I found these pretty buttons in my button stash. Aren't those pretty? I, they're just plastic. You know, they're inexpensive buttons. I don't buy, you know. And, of course, they'll just go. Let's see, is that the left side? I guess that's the left. And then you'll eventually put pretty buttons down the front. Well, I think they need to be spread out a little bit more. I think that's a little close. How about coming down? down of course you'll have you'll be you know you'll be you'll be able to space them just like you want them what do you think of that and that look pretty 
All right, I will work a little bit. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. This is done. I have steamed. You, I steam on the wrong side. I tried uh, the other method, but I went right back to my iron where I turned everything on the wrong side. And what I'm, what I'm trying to steam is any places that have a lot of uh, stock in it. I don't do a lot of steam. I never steam my one-by-one uh, one ribbing or anything like that or your collar. You know, it's just enough to give it a little shape. This is acrylic yarn, so there's not a lot of work to do on it. Uh, far as putting it into shape and I lightly lay it nice and flat on the ironing board and just lightly steam and then I hand press it everything into shape and uh, I steam uh, I do steam my I turn my on my seam here my three needle bind off seam yes it'd be great just turn it inside just like this just like if you were working ironing a, a beautiful blouse and I lightly steam that seam so that it would nice stay nice and flat so these are just little things, you common sense things that you would normally do. Just know that, you know, it's acrylic yarn and you don't need to over steam it or kill it. You just want to put enough heat on there to, that you can hand press it down and it is good to go. And of course, this one had the back. Let me make sure I turn the back on this one. Of course, I had this. Yes, I did all of this. I have two sweaters. Now, if you made it to the end of this, this long tutorial, part one and part two, guess what? You get a surprise. No, I won't give you cheese and crackers this time. But, remember, we have a spar cloth. Let's see, can I turn it over here and then I'm going to readjust the camera. Get, you know, I have a, let's see. You know, I have a lot of cotton. Now, I'm going to pull in on this one a little bit. Let's see, how about a little bit more. I have a lot of cotton from a long time ago. Some of these companies, you know, have gone out of business. But I have a lot of old sugar and cream and small balls. And then I have those great big balls that I would buy from Joann's because I'd have a coupon or they'd have some kind of sale. I don't know what I plan to do with all that cotton. Anyway, and peaches and cream. So you can just use any uh, very uh, gated, plain. But I thought since my theme was about to, you know, relax, the, well, first of all, nature, and just relaxing and enjoying uh, things like the solar eclipse. Was that just beautiful? So I thought I'm going to just make a small spark cloth for someone who maybe just, well, I'll just try that first if you're new to everything. First of all, here it is. Now, I'm going to give you the formula and then kind of walk you through it so you can see, you know, just to, I won't take long. All right, here's Jay's Knit Spark Cloth, and here's my formula. I have a border, and it's the same border, off the sweater. See, it's, it's just, see, I like to do things like that. Use, go back and use something every once in a while. And um, that way it becomes locked in my mind, you know. So a border of nine, and then I need a little, you, you know the, the, thing now you know how it flows I need some separation stitches so an odd number is always usually pretty good but here's three then the whole pattern the Shetland fern lace you know there's 13 and I put that on a block now we can just make up any uh, add any stitches depending on how wide we want the cloth so I put 18 I just took I thought well nine and nine that's 18 so see, I didn't have to think about it <laughs> I thought, well, how many stitches should I put? Well, 99 is 18, so I'll put 18 stitches here of just plain knitting and then a border of 9 on this side. So here it is in real time. First of all, on this um, spark cloth, I use a US number 6 needle. You can do it straight or circular. I had some small circulars, so I use a US number 6 give you, to give you a tight weave. You don't want, you know, you want, you want to be tight enough so it shows up and it holds its shape. If it's too, if you use too large of needles, it won't hold the shape. It'll just be a funny looking <laughs> something. I don't know. So that is, and then it will also be on the screen in the instructions. But there it is. There, here is your formula. And so you will cast on 52 stitches. We weren't doing ribbons, so I didn't have to worry about an odd number. Now, let's go over it. I'll leave this right here so I can kind of tell you, walk you through it. All right, so now here... Here's my spar cloth. Let me pull it up a little bit. 
here's my first on the formula it says a border of nine so here's my nine stitches right here I'm knitting across of course we're down here I do my nine and put a marker then I continue to knit across however many stitches across and you can make yours large if you want to until I come to the last nine I put a mark I see I have nine stitches left so I put a mark and go back into the uh, you know um, our border pattern it's knit three yarn over knit two together knit two that's that same little knit three yarn over knit two together knit two same same edging okay and then I'm gonna turn right around start again come and then in this part it's just garter stitch so I'm gonna knit and I think I maybe at least five rows so when you come to the first next right side row I think I forgot on here because I was trying to you know I'm, I was pressed against time but I would normally knit one row in here and purl back stand in pattern on the ends now I'm ready to start row one of this uh, Shetland fern lace exactly like the sweater so I'd start with row one I'd have three stitches here to uh, separate then I'd work row one and you know you'd be putting putting markers as you go I'd have a marker and for the pattern and then I'd work across just knitting across and then the border back and forth however many repeats you want I was running out of time so I, I did three real quick and then I continued in stocking it on up to the top and then when I got as far as I wanted I put another five rows of garter stitch and bound off in with the knit stitch and voila that is a beautiful little addition to something that you might want to give to someone for a special gift what do you think of that just a way to use up some scraps some old cotton sugar and cream <laughs> I gotta get rid of some of this cotton I don't know but that was fun and I thought it would be a cute little bonus pattern for you well I think all has been said and all has been done I hope you like your sweater I hope you really do give it a try because uh, I think this is going to be a quick way, quick way. I made the, you know, I may do one on all three just to say, okay, well, Jay, show us how you do yours, and if you did three uh, pieces, because I do them a little different, and uh, I could do that maybe one time. All right, so, but I've got, lot, just in case you think, well, Jay, have you you were gone for a little while? Well, I've just been so busy. I got so many things on the needle. I've got things coming up. I think you're gonna really like. And then also sometime at the end of September, the middle of September, you know how it runs. It depends on my son's job. But uh, everyone has been waiting for uh, print of the wave, print of the wave sweater. And uh, I'm ready to get that one done. I think it'll be one that you will enjoy. It will be in the same style, somewhat in the style of the feather and fan sweater. But I'll, I'll, I'll put a little twist or do something. So, no, Jay's been very busy. Everything's going great. Tennis, <laughs> knitting. I'm just having fun, and I hope you are, too. I'm just excited that you stopped by. I'm excited to share what little bit I can share with you, and I hope that you get this and give it a try. So, with nothing else, this is Jay, and this has been Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam, and I can't wait till we meet again. So until then, see ya!